presents the Screen Guild Player. The Lady Esther Screen Guild Play tonight, Love Before Breakfast. The starring players... This is Virginia Bruce. This is Brian Donlevy. And this is David Bruce. Lady Esther presents the Screen Guild players in Universal Pictures' comedy romance, Love Before Breakfast, based on Faith Baldwin's Spinster Dinner. It stars Brian Donlevy as Scott Miller, Virginia Bruce as Kay Colby, and David Bruce as Bill Wadsworth. The Lady Esther Screen Guild players in Love Before Breakfast. <laughs> Johnson, Scott Miller. Buy me 10000 national at the market. Right. Hello, Ash. I need some more insurance on the Dallas plant. Yeah, about a million again. Hello, Walters. I'm ready to listen to that deal of yours. Tomorrow morning, I'll give you 15 minutes. Right. Say, Dean. Yes, sir? Phone Miss Kay Colby and ask her to lunch with me, will you? And tell uh, Mason I want to see him at once. <laughs> See me, Scott? Oh, yeah. Come in, Mason. Sit down. Yes? Miss Colby is lunching with Mr. Wadsworth today. Oh, well, then ask her to dine with me tonight. Tell her my favorite opera is on at the Met. What opera shall I say, sir? Well, don't ask me. Look it up in the paper. <laughs> now then, Mason, uh, how about that report on William Wadsworth? Well, I've got a lot of information, Scott. He's been working here for Amalgamated Oil. He's supposed to be engaged to Miss Kay Colby, but there's also a lady on 78th Street. I get it. Yes. Miss Colby is dining with Mr. Wadsworth tonight. Thanks. Mason, do you think Wadsworth is in love with Kay? I couldn't tell. He was with the other girl when I talked to him. Oh. He's mostly concerned about his job with Amalgamated. He's very anxious to get on. Oh, he is, huh? Well, look, Mason, how do you feel about the Amalgamated deal? <laughs> Quit kidding. That's not a deal. It's a steal. Hmm. Of course, though, if I bought in, I'd need a new assistant manager in China. Why? <laughs> Why not? Doesn't that Wadsworth fellow want to get on? But, Bill, why do you have to go to China? You were doing fine right here. Oh, uh, that's the oil business, Kay. If I want to get ahead, I've got to go where they send me. But there's no money left in oil anyway. Rockefeller took it all out. Oh, now, listen, honey, that's no way to talk. I'll only be gone about two years. Two years. Anything can happen in two years. Oh, please, Bill, don't go. We'll get along. We won't need very much. But what about my future? Your fi- But I thought we were... Well, our future. Both of us. Well, that's what I meant. Oh, honestly, Kay, it won't be long. Just keep your chin up, that's all. Remember, when that boat pulls out, I want to see my baby smile. <laughs> Time to look. Scott Miller, what are you doing here? Oh, just seeing the Countess Campanella off. <laughs> Lucky break, too, running into someone I, uh... <laughs> Say, when you cry, you don't fool around, do you? you I've, got, I've got Miss Carrie in my heart. And your, your hanky with Oh, you. sure, here. I can't stand goodbyes. I can't even see anyone off on the subway. I, I'm afraid I, I've ruined your handkerchief. <laughs> well, I'll have it framed. How's the eye now? Well, the eye's all right, but I, I've still got an awful lump in my throat. Well, we could wash that down with a little hot coffee. <laughs> That's no idea. Uh-uh. That was an inspiration. <laughs> Ah, 
How about it, Kay? Could you go for a sandwich? Just coffee, please. Black and hot. Mm-hmm. Still got that lump? Yes, I still got that lump. <laughs> well, at least you could do your grieving on your own time. After all, the Countess is gone, too. And I'm sure you'll miss her. She's very lovely, except for that stupid little dog she carries. Ming Chu? Why, he's a peak in these. The only time I ever saw a wrinkle was legs. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, where's the Count? Where are the snows of yesteryear? Where are the woodbine, Twiner? That's where the Count is. <laughs> hey, have you really got it as bad as you think? Um, what does a lady do when she wants to change the subject? <laughs> oh, it's a funny world, all right. What's funny about it? Well, the Countess wants to marry me. You want to marry Bill, and I want to marry you. You never give up, do you? Not me. Scott Miller of the Northwest Mounted. You know, I had quite a job getting the Countess off to Honolulu. Is that as far as she's going? Well, I thought Honolulu was far enough for her. My real problem was Bill. Bill? What did you have to do with Bill's going to China? Oh, amalgamated oil was a darn good investment. I'd been planning to absorb it anyway. Wait a minute. Are you trying to say you bought an oil company just to... just to... Why not? Bill had me stymied, didn't he? So you sent him away just to have a clear field. Now, isn't that marvelous? You just push a button and move heaven and earth. Oh, now, Kay, wait. Leave on terrible in a blue serge suit. Slow down, will you? I didn't realize Let me tell you something, little Napoleon. This is one time your button pushing won't do you any good. Bill will be closer to me in China than you ever can be right here in New York. Where's my purse? Oh, wait a minute, Kay. Now, the coffee. You can take the coffee and drink it. <laughs> Good night. Wait, Kay, don't go. Hey, wait a minute. Wait. Cabby, did you see a girl come running out of here? Yeah, she took that hack up ahead. All right, you keep that hack in sight and you got yourself a 20 buck tip. Come on, let's go. Hey, guys, pipe that dish at the second table all alone, too. Yeah, I saw her when she come in. Here's where I go to work. Don't you wish you could? Yeah, and how much says I can? Five bucks? Dig it out, I'll be back for it. Excuse me, miss. Yes? I was telling my friends you look sort of lonesome. How about a drink to the old alma mater? Oh, you're a student? I should say not. We're football players. <laughs> I'm afraid you're playing in the wrong league. The referee just called a foul. Oh, come on, Toots. I crave companionship. Well, you should join a sorority. Ah, uh, be a sport. Well, yeah, I bet the fellow's five bucks. Excuse me, madam. Is this juvenile annoying you? Not as much as some people I know. That's telling him, sister. Now, look, Sprout. Be a good scout and toddle back to your table, will you? Scott Miller, will you please stop interfering in my affairs? Oh, I didn't know this was an affair. Madam, is this old geezer annoying you? He most certainly is. You heard him, mister. Maybe you better totter back to your table. Don't try to be funny. Hey, guys. Yeah? What's up, Bob? Somebody looking for trouble? Yeah. And somebody's going to find it fast. Now get back to your table. Wait a boy. minute. Who do you think you're pushing Why I'm going to... You ask for it. Oh! 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 Okay. At the side door. Here. Follow me. Scott, you ought to be ashamed. Why? I thought it was a pretty good fight. Well, yeah, your tactics are a trifle dirty. Oh, I picked those up in the oil field. Well, anyway, you, you've got a swell left hook. <laughs> you really think it's good? Good. It's terrific. Just look at my eye. <laughs> Well, uh, Mother, darling, I don't think I'll eat this morning. Now, darling, you know you... Oh, where did you get that eye? Well, the blue one comes from your side of the family. The black one's a present from a gentleman friend. <laughs> oh, say, <c'est> l'amour. <laughs> okay. Yes, Anna? These flowers used to come. Hey, bring them in. Thank you, Anna. 
You can leave them. Sure thing, Miss Kate. Oh, what a beautiful basket. And such an odd shape, too. Why, it's just, just like a... Was that a box? Well, it wasn't Gabriel Thorne. Oh, he's inside the basket. Oh, a peek in it. Oh, yeah, you little darling. You oh, Miss Kate, who sent him? Aren't you going to look? Well, I don't have to. I know who sent him. Oh, no, wait. Wait, here's the card. Why, it's from Scott Miller. It says, introducing Junior in his own doghouse, so maybe you'll let me out of mine. Oh, isn't that cute? Yes, it's hilarious. You know, I think Scott Miller is simply wonderful. You know, you could marry worse men, my dear. Just name me 12. I wouldn't even talk to that goof. The next time I see him, I'll... Hello. Hello, Kay. I just... Uh... Oh, I... Hey, Ben, sorry. Miss Colby, no, come to phone. She's been busy. You're not darling, little dog. Well, okay, I... But A got message, Mr. Miller. Miss Colby, you say the same to you. <laughs> So one time I accept a date while Bill's away, and Stuart has to be two hours late. Well, it's fashionable, Kay. Incidentally, uh, what sort of costume is Stuart wearing to the ball? Oh, I don't know. He said something about going as a fudge Sunday. A fudge Sunday? Oh, isn't that sweet? Oh, there he is. No, I'll go. Young man, it's about time you... Hello. Scott Miller, now what? I've come to take you to the ball. Well, I hope you can bear up under it. But I'm going to the ball with Stuart Farnham. You don't say. I do say. I tell you that I'm going with Stu. How vulgar. Stu. Is that a name or a condition? Don't try to be funny. <laughs> Stu is his name. Well, you know, that's strange. It also happens to be his condition. Hmm. Hey, Stu. Come here. That's the great little party, all right. Have a lots of fun. Stu. Another such and scooter, honey. That's all I need. Just one little one. Well, it seems to me that he's temporarily indisposed. You did this, Scott. You got him drunk so he couldn't take me. Now, Kay, all I did was suggest a drink. After he'd had about 16, I found he couldn't hold his liquor. Well, Scott, isn't this going a little too far? Well, I guess so. You know... I don't know what I'm going to do with me. Well, I know what you can do with me. Get out of here and leave me alone. Oh, don't be silly, Kay. Why can't I take you to the ball? Just take you there and bring you back. I'd sooner go with a one-eyed weasel. Oh, honest, I'm not going to even dance. Look, I'm in a dinner jacket. I'm not in costume. Aren't you? I thought you were masquerading as a gentleman. Mother? Yes, dear? What is it? Will you phone downstairs and get me a cab? I'm going to the ball alone. Mason, you really think you're right. Now, I haven't talked to Kay all evening. That's the whole idea, Scott. I tell you, it's the only way to handle women. You know, sort of zig when they think you'll zag. That keeps them off balance. Oh, that's when they fall in love, huh? When they're unbalanced? How else? Now, you stay right out here on the terrace, and pretty soon she'll be running after you. Oh. Say, Mason, how come you know so much about women? I'm a bachelor. Excuse me, do you have a match? I... Uh, bye, Mr. Miller. Did you want a light? Thank you. I didn't know you were out here on the terrace, Scott. I'm sure you didn't, or you wouldn't be here. Oh, now, please don't get personal. I've been having such a wonderful time. Why not be nice and, well, amusing? Well, should I make a funny face or tell a story? Well, I, I know the face. Uh, I don't know the story. Well, it's about a button pusher and a... A, a Pekingese. No, no, definitely not a Pekingese. More of a bulldog. A bulldog? You see, this button pusher was pretty smug, used to having his own way, until the little bulldog came along. Oh. Mm -hmm. And he chased the little bulldog for a long time, but he didn't seem to be getting any place. And... Maybe she didn't like his 
method. She didn't. But he couldn't change because he was an old bu- foot button pusher and set in his ways. <laughs> and the bulldog was stubborn, too. Yeah, that's it. Seems you do know the story. Just parts of it. You didn't say that the bulldog was interested in someone else. And still is? And still is. Well, then, there's nothing for the button pusher to do but (laughs) take up his marbles and go home. I hope you have fun, Kay. Goodbye. Men. Sometimes they do the darndest things. The curtain falls on Act One of the Lady Esther Screen Guild Players. And now the lights go on. Do you welcome those bright lights? Or would you rather sit in darkness, kind concealing darkness that hides little blemishes? If you want to be proud of your skin, if you want to look and feel radiantly attractive in any light, listen to this message from Lady Esther. Every time I personally apply Lady Esther face cream to my skin, I think to myself... This cream is really wonderful. I've been making Lady Esther face cream and using it for more than 30 years. And it's still a thrill of pleasure to see the soft, young finish it gives my skin. The clarity and translucence on which face powder looks so beautiful. That's why I say to you, make the Lady Esther patch test. It will tell you more in half a minute than I could tell you in half a day. To make the patch test, you just rub a little Lady Esther face cream on one patch of skin like one cheek. Then you wipe it off. And with it, you wipe off all the dry flakes, all the dead clinging particles nature is trying to throw off. Run your fingers over that cheek and feel the difference. Feel how smooth and silky it's become to your touch. Now powder that one cheek and see the difference. See how the dull, drab look is gone, how your skin has taken on a new, vibrant look. I do hope you'll make the patch test and see and feel this difference for yourself then you'll know why so many women call Lady Esther face cream the most beautifying cream they've ever used. You see, it does all these four things. One, it thoroughly cleans your skin. Two, it softens your skin. Three, it helps nature refine the pores. And four, it leaves a smooth, perfect base for powder. Remember, you can prove all this in just 30 seconds with the patch test. So go to your druggist now. Get a jar of Lady Esther four-purpose face cream and make the patch test tonight. And now, Lady Esther presents the second act of Love Before Breakfast, starring David Bruce as Bill Wadsworth, Virginia Bruce as Kay Colby, and Brian Don Levy as Scott Miller. Time is several weeks later now. Kay hasn't heard a single word from Scott. And it isn't as if she cared, of course. But, well, after all, she is a woman. Hello. Hello, is this the telephone company? Yes, ma'am. Can I help you, please? My telephone is out of order. People can't get me. The phone doesn't ring. Have you reported it, please? Well, I'm reporting it now. It doesn't ring. If you will hang up, I will try it, please. All right. Well, it rang that time, but but why doesn't anyone call me anymore? I'm sorry, madam. Have you tried the Lady Esther patch test? (laughs) Now, don't get worried, Scott. It's working out fine. All you have to do is stay away from it. And proposed by mental telepathy? Now, look, Mason... About this last angle of yours, are you sure you're right? I'm absolutely positive. That girl's in love with you, Scott. You've just got to give her enough rope to prove it. Uh, Yes, Dean? Miss Kay Colby is here to see you. Kay? Here? Well, send her in. Thus beginneth the next lesson. Scram you. Out the other door. All right, but don't quit. Stick by your gun. Scott? 
Oh, uh, hello, Kay. Come in. I hate to barge in on you like this, but I'm selling these milk fund tickets, and I just happen to be in the neighborhood, so I... Oh, uh, is that all that brought you here? Is that all? Well, I've got 200 left at $10 a piece. Oh, 200 hmm? Miss Dean. Yes, sir? Make out a check for $2,000 and mail it to... Metropolitan Charity. You got it? Yes, sir. Well, that's that, Kay. Anything else? No. Except I'm sorry I was out when you phoned last night. Are you really? Really, Scott. Then it's too bad I didn't phone. Oh, well, that Anna. She makes the most ridiculous mistakes. I... Oh, well, frankly, Kay, I did mean to call you. Did you? Yes, I wanted to tell you that Bill's coming home. Coming home? Why? Oh, why not? You mean you're just handing him back to me? <laughs> well, anyway, I'm willing to gamble. I see. You think that I'll get tired of him. Oh. I'll realize I don't know my own now, mind. Now, wait a minute, Kay. Meet Kay Colby, the human guinea pig. Now, wait a minute. I didn't mean... Still pushing meet... buttons, aren't you? Still running the world. Well, let me tell you again. You're way off your base. When Bill gets home, I'll be the happiest girl in town. Good day. Holy smoke. What a temper. What happened, Scott? Well, just as you told me, I stuck by my guns. Yes, but what was all that noise? They backfired. Hey, Kay, you don't know what it means to be back. Are you as glad as I am, honey? No. Remember me, Bill? I'm the girl you left behind. The girl I'm going to celebrate with. Hey, waiter. Yes, sir. Bottle of champagne. Gordon Rouge, 26. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Oh, Bill, it's very expensive. Do you think we should? I'll let you in on a secret, baby. Amalgamated just doubled my salary. Doubled your salary? For what? Hey, don't you think I'm worth it? Oh, of course I do, but naturally you didn't accept it. Accept? Hey, what's the matter with you? Don't tell me you'd take anything from a man like Scott Miller. Well, why not? He's my boss. Why are you so sore at him? He's been swell to me. I know. Just wish you were working someone else. Well, don't let's talk about him anymore. Let's talk about us. Oh, huh? yeah. We're going to have a swell weekend, Kay. Bob Metcalf's invited us out on his boat. Oh, but I don't like boats. But you know the Metcalfs. They're a million laughs. I still don't like boats. But, Kay, I... excuse me, sir, with Mr. Miller's company. Bottle of champagne. Hey, I didn't know Scott was here. I would have given you six to one. Bill, I'm awfully tired. Let's go home. But Scott sent us a bottle with his compliments. We can send it back with our compliments. Oh, now, Kay, he's my boss. You won't get anywhere by insulting him. You're telling me. Well, hello, you two. How's it going? Fine, Mr. Miller. Hey, thanks for the wine. How about having a glass with us? I'm sorry. I'm just waiting for Janie. We're on our way to the Laramore. Oh, there you are, Scott. And Billy Lamb. Hey. Oh. <laughs> hello. I uh, <laughs> believe you remember the Countess Kay. Oh, yes. Countess, I didn't know you were bad. Oh, didn't Billy Lamb tell you? We were on the same boat. <laughs> Yes, Jenny insisted that we stop by and say good night. That's very kind of you. Good night. You know, Billy Lamb is so amusing. I wish Scott would ask you both up to the country this weekend. Well, I'd love to, Jenny, if I thought they'd come. Well, sure we will. We'd be delighted. Bill, you're forgetting about the boat. But I thought... No, it's this weekend, dear. Scott, it's so nice of you. Some other time? Oh, sure, sure. Well, come on, Jenny. We're late. Good night. Good night, Billy Lamb. Billy Lamb. No wonder you were so quick to grab his invitation. But after all, Kate... Well, I he's... know. He's your boss. But, honey, you, you said you didn't like boats. I don't. Oh, it's too much for me. Maybe you were right before. Let's pay the check and go home. Go home? What for? We just arrived. But you... I thought you... Oh, what's the use? I'm going to get drunk. Bill... When you said a boat, I thought it was going to be a, 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 a boat, not an oversized wooden shoe like this. But you heard what the man at the dock said. The Metcalfs will pick us up out here in the big boat later. Yes, but we've been anchored in this cove five hours now, and, it, and it's getting dark, and, and I'm hungry, and I, I'm thirsty, too. Well, what do you think? I am a camel? Sometimes I wonder. Ahoy there! Pronto, ahoy! That voice, it couldn't be... Well, how are you, mate? What bulls? Scott Miller, what are you doing in this cove? Well, it's a free cove, isn't it? My yacht is anchored off your starboard bow. Would you two like to come aboard for dinner? Why, sure, we'd be glad to. We'd be nothing of the sort. Well, I thought there might be an argument, so I brought you over this hamper of food. Well, you can just take it back. Slow and... down, Kate. 
Much obliged, Mr. Miller. Don't mention it, Bill. And look, you better make sure your ground tackle's fast. It looks like we're in for a bit of a storm. <laughs> don't care a thing about me. I could just drown out here in this storm. All you care about is that, that food and that campaign. And all you care about is Scott Miller. No, don't be crazy. You're the one who's crazy. You're crazy about him. So crazy you can't stand being anywhere near him. Oh, don't be a fool. Well, I don't intend to be. I've been a sap long enough. You're just using me to burn him up. Do you know what I'm going to do? Sure, what you always do. You're going to get drunk. <laughs> Bill, it's getting worse. Stop drinking and, and get us out of here. Oh, uh, well, take it easy, Kay. We gotta, gotta wait for the net trap. Bill, Bill, wake up. The water's coming in. What's coming in? Bill, I'm horrible to drown. Oh, You've got to sober up. There's nothing to worry. Bill, you fool. Somebody help us. Help! Stand by, Prano. We're coming aboard. Going to take you two to the yacht. Scott, darling, thank heaven you're here. Scott, you needn't think that... You needn't think just because you... I mean... Just keep your mouth shut. Keep your feet in that mustard bath. Who do you think you're talking to? To an addle-brained idiot who hasn't got enough sense to come in out of the rain. <gasps> Keep your feet in that tub. It's too hot. I'm getting out. You're staying in. If you were a man, I'd poke you right in the nose. Wouldn't that be repeating yourself? I should have hit you harder. Stop yelling at me, you, you button pusher. I'll yell at anyone I want. This is my boat and what I say goes. Do you understand that? I can push every button on that wall. I can ring for the captain and make him marry us. Oh, God. Did you hear what I said? I can make a marriage. Well, aren't you going to? I said I could... What? Hey, wait a minute. Do you mean that? I certainly do. But, Scott, you'll have to promise one thing. Anything. What? Well, when you ring for that captain, can I push the button? <laughs> Thank you, Virginia Bruce, Brian Don Levy, and David Bruce for appearing with the Lady Esther Screen Guild players tonight. We are grateful for your fine performances. And now, before we tell you about next week's program, here's a word from one of America's best-known beauty authorities, Lady Esther. Do you know exactly what happens when you apply Lady Esther for-purpose face cream? I'll tell you. First, your skin is cleaned, cleaned gently but thoroughly. Even the stubborn, deeply embedded dirt in the pore openings is eased out and wiped away. Second, Lady Esther face cream loosens and absorbs the dry, clinging flakes nature is trying to throw off. That's very important. And you'll see why when you apply your face powder. You'll see how much smoother, how much younger and lovelier your powder looks on your skin. Third, Lady Esther face cream helps nature refine the pores, helps the stretched pore openings return to normal. That makes your skin look much finer and more delicate. And fourth, Lady Esther face cream leaves a perfect base for powder and makeup, smooth as velvet, but not the least bit greasy or sticky. Remember, you can prove all this in just 30 seconds with the patch test. Just rub a little Lady Esther face cream on one cheek, wipe it off, and apply your powder. Then compare that side of your face with the other. See and feel the difference. You can still make the patch test tonight. Get a jar of Lady Esther face cream from your druggist now. Next week, the Lady Esther Screen Guild players will present No Time for Comedy. It will star Alexis Smith, Helen Vinson, and Jack Carson. Be sure to listen. Virginia Bruce can currently be seen in Brazil, the Republic production. Brian Don Levy appeared through the courtesy of Paramount Pictures. And David Bruce appeared through the courtesy of Universal Pictures. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>